people in a very special way. To some of these people who are dealing with uh, COVID-19, whether it's a family member, whether it's some of the people that we've mentioned by name here tonight who are directly dealing with it, I ask that you would, in a very real way, uh, Lord, heal them and bring them to full strength and back home if they're in the hospital or, Lord, back out and about to doing the things that they do. We'll look to you and trust you for that. We pray especially for our young people as they make the trip beginning this Sunday. Keep them safe uh, on the way there and back. We ask especially, Lord, for their spiritual condition as they go. I pray that hearts would be tenderized to the truth of your word, and I pray that they would hear truth that would help them where they are and that would change their life. And, Lord, I, th I just pray for young people in general, not only our teenagers that are going on this trip, but, Lord, I think of our college-age young people. I think of young adults uh, that are represented from families here or people in our church, and we lift them up before your throne tonight. It seems like there's a generation, Lord, who is uh, searching and trying to come to some personal conclusions on things, and I pray that they would see truth in the midst of all uh, that is presented before them. Help them to be able to see with clarity what your word clearly says. Help us all to do that. Help us, Lord, not to determine our worldview by um, our affiliations in other areas. But, Lord, your word and your word alone, may that drive us. May that always be, Lord, what takes us to where we need to go and what determines the path that we're on. Tonight, we look to you and we ask again that you be with Brother Ensley as he preaches. Thank you for he and his family being with us, and I pray that you'd richly bless them there uh, at the church that uh, they're there uh, being used at. And I ask, Lord, that you would keep them safe as well as they travel back uh, after a time here in Virginia and on the East Coast. And we'll ask all these things, and, uh, and Lord, we bring our missionaries before you, the Underwoods as well. Continue to provide for them as they prepare to go to Argentina. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray, amen. At this time, I want to welcome anyone who might be joining by way of live stream. And uh, we've started the live stream perhaps these last couple weeks a little early while the prayers are going on. And uh, you might not hear all the prayer going on because until I pray, you're only going to hear that because I'm behind the microphone. So kind of keep that in mind if you're with us on Wednesday nights. We've done some things to help the live stream experience. But if you're here joining us by way of online, and I know there's always quite a few that do, but if you wouldn't mind liking and, and sharing this video, that would be a great blessing. Uh, I'm encouraged tonight because we have a guest preacher with us, uh, Brother Nathaniel Ensley and his family from Wyoming. Is it Burns, Wyoming? Now it's Hillsdale. You sound a little more dignified coming from Hillsdale. <laughs> I kind of like Burns, Wyoming, you know. But anyway, come on up here if you would. Uh, I got a chance to meet Brother Ensley back in the fall. I think it was at Brother Sumter's uh, uh, homegoing service. Yes, sir. And I got a chance to meet you there and uh, certainly heard of quite a bit uh, from your family, uh, the Logsdens who are here. And uh, anytime we can meet somebody who's anywhere doing what we're doing here at Truth, we need to welcome them with open arms, maybe air hugs this time, right, you know, that kind of thing. But we're so glad that they're serving God over there in Wyoming doing exactly what we're doing here at Truth. Praise the Lord for you guys. God Amen. bless you and come preach to us. Thanks yes, sir. For Thank you, preacher. Hard, too. Uh, yes, yeah. I think my boys, you can see them after the service. Um, all that. Can I move this thing? Yes. I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. But. Uh, Amen. Well, praise the Lord for Truth Baptist Church and uh, praise the Lord for what y'all are doing here. And I like hearing stories of what God's doing. And uh, so praise the Lord for that. And, and it's good to see my family, my wife and her youngins, I, I tell folks, and, uh, and then my sister and her husband and and her offspring, where she? There she is, right there. And uh, but praise the Lord for all that. Mark chapter two is is where we're going to be at here this evening. And uh, uh, I tell you, I, I won't tell you jokes. I'm really not real good at it. But if you listen fast, I'll preach fast. If you go long, if we go long, it's your fault because you didn't listen fast enough. You know. So, but uh, anyway, I thought that was funny, but I guess I'm the only one. But uh, but that's all right. And uh, uh, but Mark chapter two is is where we're at. And while you're turning there, just give you a little bit of update. First, I want to say thank you so much for praying for us, for giving to us back uh, back in the winter, I believe it was uh, Christmas time. I think I don't remember. Yeah, and uh, for our uh, for our need of the roof. And um, would you believe me if I told you that we put 
part of the roof on, the north side of the roof on in February. Um, and we got it done in three days. It was eight degrees when we started each morning. And uh, it's a blessing to know that there's hot coffee downstairs at the church that, that was working at because we had to use... You know what a weed burner is? You got a propane tank and a little hose, and then you got a torch and you light it. And uh, I'm told they're they're called weed burners or torch, whatever you want to call it. We had to use that back in February to get the ice off the roof. It, it's a metal roof, and, and so we get the get the ice off the screws, get ice off of the you know the heat up. It, it, it was a blessing. It was a blessing, and uh, we did the south side just a few weeks ago. Um, I did that in two days. 80 degrees makes a difference, you know. I mean, it was 8 degrees when we did it in February, and it was up in the mid-80s when we did it. Just a few, I mean, just, I mean, wow, praise the Lord. And uh, so, but thank you all, because that that seal, that helped us seal up our building. Uh, there's still other needed repairs, doors and windows and such like that, and some mud and some paint and carpet. I'm not going to, you know, uh, burn you with the grocery list there, but... I think right now that was our last major project of remodeling and repairing our building. And, uh, and I said, hallelujah, <laughs> you know, because you don't realize, and maybe you do, of how much stress and how much time that takes out of everything when you got uh, leaky roofs and you got this going on, you know. Anyhow, but uh, but but we praise the Lord for that. Thank you all again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But here in Mark chapter two, and uh, I just want to share something with you. I've, I've I've preached this message before, and uh, but you ever have a time where God brings you back through something again? And uh, here, this passage of scripture, we see uh, this passage of scripture very interesting. And I told the church folks that if you see anybody coming to our church carrying anybody on a gurney, let them in. Because we don't want them to have to come through the roof, especially being brand new. And uh, um, and I find the guy that stopped them at the door. I'm going to shoot them in the leg or something, you know. And uh, but anyhow, um, those on the live stream, I won't shoot them in the leg. Just kidding. It'll be in the shoulder, you know, so, because um, they can still walk away, you know. So, but anyway, Mark chapter two is is uh, chapter two verse number one, uh, chapter two verse number one it says, and again he entered into Capernaum. After some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. Talking about Christ. Verse 2, And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, and they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, carried of four people. Uh, verse number four, And when they could not come nigh or come near unto him for the press, for the people, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Do you see the picture now? I mean, just see that coming through. Verse number five. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Let me just pause there. Verse 6 is going to be in everyone's story of faith. <laughs> You're always going to have someone sitting and watching and talking and um, I'm sure talking about how you can do better, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but anyway, verse number seven. So why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can, for, who can forgive sins, but God only. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that, that, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Verse nine, whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. Verse 10, but, they, but that ye may know the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then he turns, we see, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, and saying, we never saw it, we never saw it on this fashion. Let's pray. Father, we ask the Lord to help us here tonight. Father, we ask the Lord just to give us clarity of thought, clarity of mind. Father, I pray, Lord, that the message that you've laid on my heart tonight will be a help, a challenge, a blessing, an encouragement uh, to your people here at Truth Baptist. And, Father, we pray, Lord, that our one and ultimate goal is to lift up Jesus, is to glorify you. 
And Father, we ask, Lord, just to help us today, help us tonight, their Father. Speak inwardly to the hearts of your people as we strive to speak outwardly. Father, I pray, Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, one of the things uh, as a pastor, as a missionary, as a church plan or whatever, I guess it all depends who I'm talking to is, is, is who they call me. You know, when I'm back there at Blessed Hope, they call me pastor, uh, at least to my face. I'm not sure what they say otherwise. I probably don't want to know. But, um, but with all that being said, there's a lot of hurting people. There's a lot of people, especially in these days, facing challenges that they've never thought they would ever face, that they would never think in their lifetime would face what they're facing now. Uh, you know, we got, you know, you can turn on the news. Uh, I'm with preacher, you know, uh, the best thing to do is about the news is just turn it off, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, you might like this channel or that channel or this channel. Well, they're all profiting off the same thing. Um, you know, but anyhow, but uh, n nonetheless, let's just, you know, anyway, I stay focused on what, what my task is here. But uh, um, many are filled with fear tonight. Um, maybe it's fear of COVID-19. And again, I'm not making light of that. Uh, take your precautions as, 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 as God leads you to do, uh, to do that. But don't let it be your guide. It's, it's not, you know, it's not our marching orders. Uh, uh, some, some, some were in fear because of the authorities that are around us, uh, whether it's the police force or, or the political force. Uh, some were in fear, at least in our part of the world, you know, y'all enjoying that cheap gas. Uh, um, well, that comes by our state taking a huge hit. Because our state is an energy state, uh, we supply, I think, 75% of this country's energy through one way or another. And by many, by many of the country having cheap gas, it means there's many families in Wyoming that are without work. And, uh, and all that's come from this, this pandemic and all this has come from all that. So many in our area are in fear of a financial shortfall. Some are uh, fear of the unknown. What if, man? Sometimes we just got that that bad case of man. What is going to going to happen today? What's going to happen tonight, man? What what's going to happen next month? Well, we get so you know, many times we get so wrapped up of what's coming around the corner, and and we forget what's right here in front of us. Can I can I hear this evening? Just you don't know me hardly, and that's probably your best thing. You know, I'm, I'm not much to be known, and, and but wife and kids are a blessing, but, you know, I'm, I'm just their chauffeur, and, you know. Uh, but here this evening, kindly and gently tonight, can I challenge us and remind us as God's people, as Christians, to simply live by faith. Amen. Live and trust our Lord no matter what is going on around us. We can, can have faith in Him. And that faith can and will give us a peace that the Bible says that will pass all understanding. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind here. So as we see here, and again, there's so much here in this in this passage here that I'm going to leave the majority of it on the table. Um, and I just want to just really just zone in here to the first couple verses and it might not even make it that far here. Uh, but we're talking about faith tonight, about living by faith, by trusting in Him. And my iPad is doing goofy things tonight. And uh, it's like it's zooming in and not zooming in. and and uh, But praise the Lord, it's... You heard that joke about iPads, right? Uh, I didn't either. So, but uh, uh, but here, the very first thing we see here in the first one through four is when we live by faith, we live beyond circumstances. We live beyond obstacles. We all have circumstances. You know, right now, right now, whatever time it is, there's because we're. Cause we're Look, like it's 20 to 8, I think. 19 to 8. Maybe right now, we all have circumstances. Some might have good circumstances. Some might have bad circumstances. We all have 
obstacles, you know, and uh, you know, have you ever seen on the Olympics or the track and field things where, where different things take place and they got the guy that runs, runs, uh, runs the whole thing, the, the whole lap track is what I'm thinking about. My iPad just kind of just, it's just like, I don't know if it's a demon in this thing or not, but uh, uh, I'm just going to walk this way. But, uh, but you know, there's a guy that runs that track, and he runs it, I think, four times counts for something, and, and uh, which I don't, you know, the Bible says the, the, the wicked runs when no man pursues, you know. So uh, anyway, but, uh, but, but then they have a track where they put stuff in front of them on purpose, they do that. You know, they run, and, and then they, I think they call them hurdles. They run, and, and they have to jump over them. And, and Chris, just clear that you'll make a better time if you get those hurdles out of the way. You know, just jump over them. And, but, you know, sometimes in our life, God has called us to run a clear track. Sometimes God has called us to run the track with hurdles in it. But, not, but nonetheless, it's still a track worth running. If God's called us to it, and it takes faith with all, we all have circumstances, we all have obstacles. Here in, in verse 1 through 4, we see um, a, a very, very interesting circumstance, very interesting obstacle here with, really there's multiple obstacles here, if you will, multiple circumstances going on here. And again, I'm not going to run each, each direction here, but I just want to, uh, uh, focus in on one thing here tonight is is that this 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 guy here had had a need and 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 he and he had to have faith to get that need met but let 's first give you some observations here there verse number one and two says and again he entered in, into Capernaum after some days and was noised that he was in a who is he Noise that he was in the house. Christ was in the house. Jesus was in the house. You know, and you know, we, we can go a lot of different directions here, but I don't. I just want to stay. I, I tend to run a lot of rabbits, and and, and I I don't necessarily. I don't think it's rabbit season quite yet. But uh, um, but isn't it good that that this house, that this house, this home. And in this snapshot of this, of this real time in life, Jesus was at the center of their home. Jesus was so much the center of their home that it was noised abroad. That those that li lived in that community, those that knew whoever lived there, those that knew about this house, at least, at least for, for the time that this was written, they realized Jesus was there. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask myself a question. If someone took a snapshot of my home right now, of your home right now, would they say, would, would it be noised abroad that Jesus was in that house, that Jesus was in that home? So that's the first observation here. But then we see verse number two says, And straightway many... Would gather together. I got a feeling I'm not going to get very far in all this, but we see here. So, and straightway many were gathered together, and you know this is not a negative thing. This is a very much a positive thing here. Many were gathered together. What were they doing? They were listening to Jesus preach. They were worshiping the Lord. Praise God for the many. M A N Y that was there in the house listening to Jesus preach. The, praise God for those that faithfully followed the Lord. And in our day, praise God for those that are faithful to the preaching of the Word of God. Praise, you know, in our neck of the woods, of course, we can say in our neck of the prairie, because we don't really have a whole lot of woods out there, there's, there's sagebrush that comes about knee high, sometimes it comes waist high. But praise God for those that, that Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, they, they come into the doors of the church and sit and fellowship and listen and respond to the preaching of the Word of God. Praise God for those that just, just soak up. The things of God. And that's what we see here. These people, they weren't they won't fighting against Jesus. They weren't fighting against the man of the palsy. They were there listening to Jesus. They were there growing in their faith. And praise God for folks that believe that it's important 
to get around the Word of God. Praise God for you tonight here in this building. Praise God for you there in the media audience uh, that believe it's important enough that I need to set time aside to spend time with Jesus. And that's what we see here in this, in this house here. And, and uh, those are, praise God for those that are faithful. In fact, this place was packed. And that's a good thing. And it's always a good thing to have Christ in your home. Parents, grandparents, we all, we all need to make much of Jesus. Make sure the Lord Jesus is in our home. And that might not be a, I'm not talking about a bumper sticker. I'm not talking about a cool phone case or, or a picture on the wall. But I'm talking about having Jesus the center of our home. Notice at least this picture of this time of this home. They was making much of Jesus. What is our focal point? What are we living for? What am I living for? I kid with, in our world, in Wyoming, they canceled the world's largest outside rodeo. First time, I think this year was the 124th year of having this rodeo. World War I did not cancel it. World War II did not cancel it. Vietnam, all these other wars did not cancel uh, the world's Cheyenne Frontier Days is what they call it. But they canceled it this year. And again, I'm not throwing stones at that. But, uh, um, you know, God's got a way of getting our attention. God, God's got a way of pulling the things that so clutter our focus of Him. And uh, I'm going somewhere there. Just bear with me here. True biblical faith, as we see here, is centered on the Lord. A true biblical faith is centered on the Lord. In order to have true biblical faith, we need to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There must have been a time where we put our faith and trust in Jesus. Uh, you know, here we see in this, in this passage of Scripture, Mark chapter 2, we see they knew who Jesus was. They knew He was the man there. Now, granted, they each of them had their own level of knowing who He was, and we're not going to talk about all that. But, uh, but we see that they knew Him. When we as God's people strive to live by faith, mark it down. We see in verse number 6 and 7, there's going to be some folks, verse number 1, that's going to be for you. Noise to brawl that Jesus was in their home. Mark it down. There's going to be some folks that's going to be a blessing to you. There's going to be some folks that, that's going to be an encouragement to you. But then we come down to verse 6 and 7. Then, then there's going to be some folks that just, well, do you know who Mrs. Olson is? Off a little house in prayer. Does anybody, my kids, yeah, there's one, yeah, a couple of us, man, y'all need to brush up on you know, some of that stuff, you know. I mean, I know it's kind of fairly new, you know, but, uh, uh, but uh, Mrs. Olson, you should Google her. She's a blessing, and I'm pretty sure I've pastored her before. And, uh, uh, but, you know, just, just, just kind of, well, I better keep moving here, but some folks are just against you, you know. You know, some folks, they, they just, they just go that route every time they get true biblical faith, I believe, I believe, will be noticed. True biblical faith, I believe, will be noticed. We see here in verse number 5, Jesus saw their faith. Saw their faith. I'm, imagine in being in verse number 2. I'm, I need to hurry up here. Imagine being in this room, verse number two, and straightway many were gathered together, and so much that there was no room to receive them. Not, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. Now, I can't help but think, wonder how many fishermen were in this room. This preacher, why do you ask that? Because look at, read that again. Many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. I think they were breaking the social distance guideline. Just a hunch. I, I think, and as we keep reading, verse number 4, and they could not come nigh unto the press because there were so many people there. They were packed in like sardine, sard, a sardine can, I believe, in my opinion, was probably more roomy <laughs> than this house was because it was packed in there. Now, now let me just be real with you. This is before speech stick. This is before Axe body spray. I guess that's still a thing. This is before right guard, you know, uh, you know, really puts a whole new mindset on smell that old spice, you know. But I don't think that's the old spice that they're looking for. But, but just get that picture here. They were, they were in there. They were in there. I'm pretty sure, I don't care what time of year it is, if they're in that house, they're packed in there that tight. They're sweating. <laughs> you know, they were packed in there, but they didn't care because they were seeing Jesus. 
They were listening to Jesus preach. They were worshiping their Savior, if you will. So that was all introduction. I'm just giving you something real quick. Uh, we see the plot here. They were blocked. They were blocked. They could not get in. They're less than standing room only. You know, shoulder to shoulder. They climb through the roof. And four men work together. Look at verse number three and four. And, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Who was these four men? Exactly. We don't know. And I, I, I've been in ministry for a little while. I'm thankful for the four men. I'm thankful for the men and ladies and children and young people that work behind the scene. No one really knows who they are. Might not even know who their name is, what their name is rather. But God noticed these men working behind the scenes to take someone that was in dire need to Jesus. Amen. I tell you what, I think I challenge my people at Blessed Hope Baptist Church in Hillsdale, Wyoming. I challenge them. Let's not be worried about who gets the credit. Let's not worry about limelight or dark light or whatever it is. Let's just work and get people to Jesus. Because that's really the bottom line. That's really what we're here for, is these four people had enough faith to live for Jesus. They were blocked. They climbed through the roof. Four men worked together. That's another whole message. This is before Independent Baptists came along because they were working together, you know. And, uh, uh, but they saw, saw the reasons. They saw the reasons now. Here, just, for, just be with me. Just a couple more minutes here. Just, they, they saw the reasons why they could not go forward. They saw the reasons why they could not get to Jesus. They were true reasons. They were valid reasons. They were honest reasons. But can I say it this way? These five men's faith were bigger than other people's and their own reasonings in their own hearts. They were bigger than their circumstances and their obstacles. I don't know where you're at here tonight. Um, you know, with all the things that's going on in our country and in our society and really in our churches all across this world. But can I challenge you tonight? Don't, don't lose faith. Continue to live. Yes, be smart. Be, you know, God gave you intelligence to use it. You know, God gave us all that to use it. But he didn't say to just throw out our faith and trust of him. But folks... You ever had that burning desire when, when the circumstances are against you, when, uh, uh, when, when problems arise, when obstacles are there, the world is telling you to just to not get on the roof, but just to go sit down and come back another day. But there's that burning desire. There's that passionate, compelling reason. And we really can't explain on why you simply have to go forward by faith. You know, God has not called any of us to quit. God has not called any of us to tuck tail and run. Uh, but he's called all of us to go forward for the cause of Christ. Amen. And verse number 3 and 4 it says, And they come unto him, they made it, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, and they could not come in. They could not come in unto the press. They uncovered their roof. Where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And verse number five, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. So let me just, just leave this thought with you here in this last few minutes. What are we stopping at? What are we, as God's people, Stop. What is stopping us when God's called us to go past? You know, did they have reasons why to stop? Yes. Did they have very good? Yes. They, they had every, I mean, no one would faulted them. But they knew they had to get to Jesus. They knew their buddy, their friend, their, their, their family member possibly had to get to Jesus. How many of us would have just stopped at the door? How many times, how many times have, have I stopped at the door? I'm reminded, I'll give you this little story and I'll be done. I'm reminded 
And the children of Israel, you remember that? You know, Charlton Heston did it, you know. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Do you know who Charlton Heston is? Uh, amen. Two, wow, praise the Lord. Wow, amen. Um, the Ten Commandments, anyway. But uh, um, totally lost my thing. My, my iPad finally quit doing what it was doing. But um, um, remember the Red Sea? I think it's parted. You know, they did that. It's, it split, you know. And um, he they, coming out of Egypt, and they God God does a miraculous thing. Moses says, "Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord." Right? And he and he and God parts the Red Sea, and then the cross. Well, do you know about the Jordan River? Very similar, not the same, but similar. Similar miracle, it's really the same miracle, but different, uh, different precursor, different prerequisite. Red Sea, they had to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, and then God did it. When they came to the Jordan River sometime later, they come to the Jordan River, it's flooding out its banks, and, and God says, you step out in the Jordan River, and then as you step, as you walk, I'll part the Jordan River. I think God wanted to see, hey, I've been feeding your sorry carcass for all this time. I've been feeding you time and time. I've given you victories, you know, so on and so forth. Maybe can, can you by now possibly step out by faith and go across the Jordan River? How many times in my own life have I been standing at the Jordan River expecting God to do a Red Sea miracle? But God is at the Jordan River wouldn't do a Jordan River miracle. And I think we see that here. Many of us, we want God to do great things. We, man, we would love to have our families and friends healed of God. But we don't want to get on the roof. Many times in my own life, and this is some of the same stuff that we're praying through right now about different things that God's stirring in our own hearts. You know, sometimes God just wants to get... Who loves comfort zones? That's, that should be all of us. You don't have to put your hand because that's the reason why they call it comfort zone. Uh, because we like them. But sometimes God calls us out of those comfort zones and to step out by faith. So the thought that I want to leave you tonight is very, very simple. Let's live by faith. Challenge you kindly and compassionately to live by faith regardless of circumstances regardless of obstacles. Just as these four men got that man, their friend, to Jesus, let us be that so persuaded to either get other people to Jesus or get our own selves to Jesus or trust in Him because He can. He's got it. He's got it. We just got to trust Him. Pastor. Pastor. Brother Ensley, that was a blessing. I appreciated that. And what a great truth there about Jordan River compared to the Red Sea. We all want the Red Sea to separate right in front of us and we just go walk on through on dry ground. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes you have to step into the water for the Lord to continue to work. And as we live by faith, he proves uh, that he's faithful as well. Amen. He's always faithful, but he wants us to live that life of faith. Thank you so much for that. What a great truth. Uh, I never grow tired of that passage uh, and that truth about those four bringing their friend to Jesus. And, you know, we just need to get it done. And there's all kinds of things that will hinder us. Uh, let me just speak personally here. And because uh, he was so timely and even left a minute or two before eight o'clock. So, man, you know how to do this right, Brother Ensley. That's good. And uh, he knows how to get invited back. But, um, Personally, let me just share with you, and I was thinking about this as he was preaching. Um, I have been burdened a little bit about ministry being disrupted, and there's nothing we can do about it uh, other than the best we can. But I've been burdened about not being able to be back together yet on Sunday nights and not having junior church and children's ministry and, and our connection classes like normal. I've been burdened about not having our normal soul winning times and these kinds of things. And um, my prayer is, is that as the Lord reveals to us, it's time that we would step into the Jordan River. 
I think they say it takes three solid weeks to form a habit. Well, we've had three months to form some habits that probably aren't the best. Uh, would you agree with me? And, uh, and we need to, when it comes time, and the Lord tells us, and I don't want to ever get ahead of God, we need to get those habits back in place that we had in place before. And uh, I pray and trust that you're with me. And uh, if you're here tonight or whether you're watching by way of live stream, it's gone against my nature to hold off on some things. But I, at the same time, know that it's the Lord's will. And when the Lord reveals that it's time to take the next step, then it's time to take the next step. And uh, as he lets us know, let's by faith follow God together. And, uh, and I know there's some that need to watch their health, and there's some who are uh, compromised in their immune system and so forth, and that's still the case, and I totally understand that. But as the Lord continues to bring us back, uh, let's be there, and let's trust God together in what he's doing. Uh, I will say on Sunday evenings, I'm going to start uh, a new series of messages on the book of Ezra, and, and it will be by live stream at least to begin, but that's going to be our thought of God's people regathering, God's people coming back. And I've wanted to preach on that for some time. we got the perfect setup now for it, for God's people to come back. We'll start in Ezra on Sunday evening. Be here Sunday morning. I hope you can come at the 1030 hour, and I'd love to have you here with us for that time. Pray for the teenagers as they get prepared, and we'll be leaving right after the Sunday morning service. If we can get some folks here to maybe take some of those wipes off the back information table and just wipe down with a sanitation wipe some of these pews that we've been sitting in, and uh, that would be help. I think Heather touched up the bathroom just before tonight, but if we want to do another wipe through there afterwards, that would be great. Let's pray together. Father, again, thank you for this time that we've had. Thank you for this great message by Brother Ensley. Lord, bless him and his family. Help us to take to heart what we've heard I do pray that we would live by faith and that you would put our faith to the test and that, Lord, we would prove ourselves to be faithful in that testing time. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing. I pray, Lord, that we would not grow stagnant in our faith because we're in a time now where that could easily happen. I pray that we'd see everyone come back in due time and, uh, and then some. We'll trust you for that. We know that you're working. We know that you're moving. We know that even in the midst of all that's happening in our world, Lord, it's a time that, that is ripe for revival. And there's plenty of people now who can hear and turn to the truth. Now more than ever, Lord, may we shine and may we shine brightly in this dark world. We'll trust you to help us do that. Be with us now. Bring us back again at the appointed time. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight. Help us to sanitize everything that would be a blessing. <laughs>